Okay, so we'll do a very quick uh, uh, recap. But, you know, again, you know, as Thor said, please, uh, please stop me. I mean, I, I cannot see you. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, the nature of the online. So if I don't see you, I, I, I go, you know, fast. <laughs> so you guys tell me, no, I don't understand that you stop me. Okay. So, um, so yesterday we looked at variation Monte Carlo. And so the idea was uh, you have uh, an operator, which was the Hamiltonian, but uh, because we're interested in the energy, but also in the derivative of the energy. We get there sooner, sooner. So, you know, we, we compute an expectation value, we rewrite it as an integral, we do real space, you know, uh, quantum Monte Carlo, and then we essentially try to uh, rewrite this integral as something we sample around, uh, you know, our Monte Carlo run. And the, the, um, so this is the local energy, Epsi divided by Psi, multiplied by this probability density. Okay, which is uh, the wave function squared. Okay, there, so there is already a question in the chat. Now I can search. Ah, oh, no, sorry, that's Thor. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the probability density, and that's what we are trying to uh, actually sample. Okay, so let's assume for a moment you have m samples distributed according to p. You estimate the uh, the average energy just by collecting this e of l along the trajectory. Okay, and then you can do so also for different uh, expectation value. You can substitute a different operator, okay? And uh, you're going to do for that this will be, you know, your variance, you know, that tells you how good, how good or how bad also your, uh, your, your wave function is. You know? So if you're having an eigenstate, that's actually equal to zero. Mm? And now the error will be proportional to uh, sigma, so an estimate of it, of course, divided by the square root of error. Okay, so, so the you know, square root of m is independent on dimension and sigma square grows like the size of the system. Okay, so sigma square is an extensive quantity. Okay, so that's where the dimension of the system comes back. But that's, uh, um, <clears throat> that's always the same. So there is not an actual, uh, so m to the power of uh, some, so some dimensions. Okay, so <clears throat> let me see. Oops, I'm going backwards. Wait. Okay, so now the question was, you know, how we generate the sample. So P is given, we assume is given for a moment. And what you want to have is a, a way to move through space. Okay, so we generate a Markov chain. We are having M, which from an initial brings us to a final. And what we do, because uh, uh, we need to be able to actually sample an appropriate M, which gives you P, not which gives you something else. We write it as a proposal, that's something you choose, and as an acceptance, okay? So you factorize it. So you're here, you're in I, you go to F according to T. So you put yourself in, in I, you, you choose T being a Gaussian, for instance, and then you ask yourself, do I accept or do I reject, okay? And uh, the accept rejects, um, the, the acceptance is given by this expression, that's a common choice. And if you think of a, a T which is symmetric, like, you know, choosing the move in a box, so this cancel, you can clearly see that you are, you tend to go in places where P grows, okay? Mm? Where P is greater than the previous step, okay? That's, that's favorable for the acceptance. Now, uh, if you, with such a choice, you satisfy detailed balance. And if you go back to the notes of yesterday, the condition is, uh, sufficient to sample P of R, okay? <clears throat> According, you know, this is you know, with an addition of few other uh, uh, conditions, you know, about stochasticity of M and about ergodicity, meaning that I'm able to actually move through the whole of space. I don't get stuck in particular regions, okay? Now, one problem with Monte Carlo is also because of the accept um, reject step is that my data are correlated, okay? So I might take M samples, but uh, uh, the effective number of samples is actually smaller. You know, in the, you have a correlation time, which depends on the, on the observable you're interested in. And so your effective number of data is actually smaller, okay? And what we do, what you should do is, you know, to do your run and to block your data, okay? To block your data and then to treat the block, the blocks as independent as long as M step is large enough, okay? So in principle, what you should do, you should do a post-analysis, you know, analysis. so after you run it. In CHAMP, what we do, because we kind of know our system, uh, we choose uh, in step roughly, you know, 10 times larger than 
20 core. And we know that if we have a 20, that's what we input, usually for variation of Monte Carlo and, and system with a, um, with a pseudo potential, you know, first and second row, uh, 20 is enough. And indeed, if you look at the grep of the total energy, at the end, you're going to have the correlation time for the energy. And that's less than two. So your 20 was a reasonable uh, as a reasonable, let's say, choice. And essentially the 20 does not, this splitting does not affect the average, but it makes sure that the estimate of your error is actually reasonable, okay? You are not underestimating it. Because if you're assuming you're having all your sample are, are independent, since you're having one over square root of M, let's say, you're gonna underestimate your error. Is this clear? Guys, I see a couple of people nodding, clear? Good. Um, now we discuss just translator, and that's the most common choice. It's not the only choice. And uh, so as a summation of the terminal, multiply by a gastro factor. So we discussed a very simple gastro, which imposes the cast condition. Okay, so to make sure, for instance, when, when electron and electron get, get, get close to each other, the, uh, and the potential diverges, the kinetic has an equal and opposite divergence in such a way the H acting on Psi divided by Psi is at least finite, okay? So, and, you know, just a factor also pulls things away. And you're going to see today how to use it. And we are, are going to use something relatively, a bit more complicated than this, but still relatively simple, okay? And it will be covered in the hands-on. Then we said, okay, fine. Somehow I haven't told you how, but you know, we, 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 we have this wave function, we have this gastro, we optimize the parameter, and now you're saying, great, I get this result. Can I improve on it? Okay. And what we do is we're using projection method. So we build an operator and we apply to this initial gas. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that we're approaching a better solution. In, in principle, mathematically, you're approaching the ground stage, okay? So the idea is you take this operator and you keep applying it, okay? You keep applying it. And in what we showed yesterday, if you're choosing your reference close to the, uh, the actual eigenvalue, which you can estimate as you go, the limit would be psi, psi naught to the ground stage. Okay, as long as you have some overlap with your initial guess and the actual final uh, ground state, which is something that you should do, okay? So now, of course, you know, mathematically is all very fine. So but how do we do it stochastically? Uh, we are doing real space. So we choose again to move in real space. And so this, um, this equation, so to go from, from times t to times t plus tau, is expressed in... Um, in integral four, okay? We're doing integrals, we're doing Monte Carlo, okay? So we go from t to t plus tau, we apply g, and g is nothing else than the operator between r and r prime, okay? And now it's a bit like, you know, before you had the m and you were going, you know, with the m through space, and now you're having g. In variation of Monte Carlo, you choose your way to move to satisfy the detail balance. Here, you are not choosing, it is given, huh? The Hamiltonian tells you how you want to move, okay? Because you want to go to the ground stage, okay? And what you're trying to find instead is psi. So it's a bit the opposite problem than variation of Monte Carlo. So now we said, okay, fine, we can sample this guy if we, psi is positive. So for the moment, uh, bosons, okay? We get back to fermions later. And now we are trying to see whether G could be interpreted as something which moves us through space, okay? Then we can, we, we, a transition probability. We saw, you know, very briefly that, you know, this is the equation, you know, which evolves our, our psi. So it means that psi satisfies an imaginary time Schrodinger equation and also G, therefore, satisfies an imaginary time Schrodinger equation. Okay. And now looking at the equation, you know, throwing away the potential, throwing away the kinetic energy, we kind of concluded that an approximation to G, you know, if tau is smaller, would be such an expression. So uh, a Gaussian, so a diffusion process, this I can sample, multiplied by a weight, okay? And the weight will actually tell us whether we survive, we die, or we claw, okay? And of course, you know, you do this calculation for one tau, and then you should repeat it for many tau and do what we call a time step extrapolation, okay? So this is a recap. Are people okay with it? Good. So now the basic... Uh, <coughs> 
the basic, uh, uh, this is a simple algorithm, would be, again, we're having bosons. So we are sampling psi zero R with the Metropolis algorithm. So you start with, you know, whatever, 100 configuration, and then you diffuse them, and then you decide, uh, you compute the factor, this factor here with the potential in, and then you decide based on the factor whether you, you, you die, you, you survive, or you, you give rise to a bunch of children, okay? And you're adjusting the reference every time to make sure that you're your population doesn't fluctuate too much. I mean, you want to keep 100 and not end up with 1 million walkers on your computer, okay? So this is purely uh, computationally uh, needed, okay? And after many iterations, you end up on say not. Now, okay, so this was the, de the, the depiction. You start, you know, with a uniform distribution and then if the potential is very large and, you know, your, your walkers try to refuse in that direction, they're going to die. In the middle, they're going to proliferate and you're going to end up eventually with your Gaussian, okay? So the problem, as we said, is that this uh, uh, potential is unbound. So one over R diverges and moreover is also extensive, you know, you know, you, it grows uh, large fluctuations. Okay. So can we do anything better? And the idea again is you did work in variational Monte Carlo. So you, you really may, you really tried at least to get a good wave function. Okay. So we should try to use the wave function now, even in diffusion Monte Carlo. Okay. So the, the equation we are starting is this. So we go from T to T plus tau. We apply G, which is the sandwich of the exponential minus tau H between R and R prime. But now we try to put inside the trial wave function. Okay, so uh, we multiply both sides by, by psi trial over prime. And now here we try essentially to rewrite this integral in terms of the product of psi trial time, times psi. Okay, so uh, you end up, you know, I multiply here for psi trial over prime. Here I multiply and divide by psi trial of R. Okay. So, and I end up with something like that. I have pi and pi here, okay? And the green function now modifies, like, you know, the original one multiplied by psi trial over prime divided by psi trial of R, okay? So now, you know, if you do mathematically, you say, well, fine, I do my projection, you know, I expand, I do like we did last time, and we are going to end up, instead of end ending on psi zero, we end up on psi zero psi trial. Okay, fine, you know, not a, not a big deal. That's what, what's going to happen. But now, if you look at the equation that we G tilde, that's this important sample, that's the way we call it, green function, this new green function, the uh, imaginary time Schrodinger equation changes a bit, okay? So we're still having a Laplacian, so we're going to have a diffusion process. We are having here our, uh, um, our, uh, potential, which is substituted by the local energy, okay? And here we are having this term, which depends on the gradient on the wave function, okay? So we're having a drift term, and that's good because it pushes the walker where psi trial is big, and we're having the local energy, which is also good, okay? And, uh, um, and uh, okay, so to actually, I'm not going to go through the um, to all the steps, but you you can do the same type of game we've done the last time. You can treat one term at a time, trying to solve it, and then you put them all together. Okay, and this of course is only valid for tau, which is which is quite small. Okay. And so if you do something like that, you're having that your Gaussian term is modified. So you start from R, you push. The walkers, you have a drift where psi, psi trial, I'm sorry, psi trial is large, okay? And then instead of the potential, you have the local energy, and this is great because at least as regards the divergences of the potential, we have cured them with the Jastro factor. So H psi over psi at least does no longer diverge if two electrons get close to each other or one electron goes to a nucleus, okay? So it's a better behaved quantity, okay? So it's also, okay, we haven't quite cured the fact that the potential was extensive, okay? So the fluctuation, the local energy. But, you know, at least we're having the, uh, the principle that if our refunction becomes better and better, the local energy will fluctuate also less and less because it's going to go to an eigen's value. Okay, so overall, this, uh, this weighting factor, which will, will be much better behaved than the one in the previous um, 
in the previous, uh, um, let's say, in the previous, in the simple approach, okay? And then we're going to get later to some other modifications, okay, that we do. Question on this? Good. So now uh, the basic DNC algorithm with important sampling. This is really basic. We do much many, more many things. But let's say you can think that now you start from psi trial psi zero. So now we really sample psi trial square. That's very nice. Now we get very close to the variation of Monte Carlo. Okay. So now you sample, let's say, a population or configuration. We call them walkers, 100 of them. Okay. That's what you're going to do. Distributed according to psi trial square. Now, what you do is you don't just diffuse them, but you first drift them and then you diffuse them, okay? You compute the branch instead. Champ does it for you, okay? Okay, here we symmetrize it. It's better, but... Um, and then you adjust... Um, you decide, you know, if the walker uh, multiply or if they die or if they just stay as they are, depending on, on P, and you're adjusting your uh, the reference energy on the fly, okay? So the code does it for you with the running average to keep also the population stable, okay? And after many iterations, you end up, in principle, we are still having bosons on psi trial times psi zero, okay? So now there is uh, the big... Uh, the big issue. So, um, okay, so we're very happy. We somehow managed to sample the green function. Okay, so we, we, have a, we are having it under control. So we do this uh, uh, drift diffusion uh, branching uh, random walk. Okay. And uh, um, so we, we, we are happy about that. But, you know, we, we assumed that Psi zero was, uh, uh, was bosonic, okay, for a ground state greater than zero. Okay, so the moment we are still handling only ground state, okay? And of course, you know, fermions uh, uh, are unfortunately have a wave function which is anti-symmetric, and so it changes sign, okay? So what we are having, we are having the so-called fermion sign problem, okay? so, which affects all Q and C methods, okay? In, uh, in different ways, uh, it, might appear, it might appear in different manner, okay? But um, essentially it's because you are treating something which is, inherently non-positive as a probability density, okay? So, um, <clears throat> let's see, how do we impose then, how do we deal with fermions? How do we impose that our wave function is anti-symmetric? And you may say, well, you know, simple, trivial, you know? I just, uh, I just uh, look at my wave function and I, I label my walkers as plus and minus and I evolve them. And then, uh, you know, I kind of keep track uh, of the sign, you might think, okay? Now, to view what's happened, to understand what's happening, uh, let's go to the simplest fermionic system we can do, okay? Which is uh, a particle in a box in the excited stage, okay? So it's uh, very simple. You say, you know, you know that you, you have uh, something more uh, bumpy here, okay? And uh, you have a node, a zero in the middle, okay? So having the wave function changes sign, and here is zero. And then you say, okay, uh, good. So I uh, flip this part uh, in the blue one. I call uh, these uh, red walkers, and I, close the, I call these uh, blue walkers, okay? And uh, the wave function is uh, psi plus minus psi minus. Very good. Then you say, uh, at the end of the day, what I'm doing by applying G, I'm actually solving the imaginary time Schrodinger equation. Okay, and uh, uh, psi at time zero, what I do is I split it. Okay, so I didn't start from the exact uh, um, eigenstate, you know, something like that, you know, and uh, I want to evolve them. So I, I flip them up at time zero. And then I try to solve this, which is equivalent to actually evolve the plus and the minus. Okay, and then subtract them. But now, okay, so let's assume that I, 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 I look at this guy and I evolve them, for the moment forget the blue part, okay? So I start with my red walkers and I evolve them uh, using the imaginary time Schrodinger equation. What will happen to these walkers? So, um, so where does diffusion Monte Carlo bring us? On which state does it bring us? What is the ground state of a particle in a box? Is something like bump in the middle. So you're going to have essentially that your red will start to spread on the other side, and your blue will start to, sp to spread on the, on, the, on the left side. Okay, so they will all try to go to the same bump in the middle. Okay, so you're going to have red and blue walkers, you know, essentially crossing the whole thing. 
and going to see solution. Okay, reasonable, you agree? So the, the plus and the minus are now, uh, are now essentially getting closer and closer to each other. Is it clear this thing? But then you say, okay, fine. Look, I mean, in this case, I know where the node is. The node is in the middle, okay? The node is in the middle, I place a barrier. I place a barrier, I guess where it is. Uh, I place a barrier, and now if my walker tries to cross, I tell him, ha ha, you don't cross, okay? You stay on one side and the other, okay? So I, I, this is, I'm sorry, now it's flipped with respect to the other case. Let's say I, I flip them up and I don't let them cross, okay? And now in the simplest, um, we are still not doing in, important sampling. We, have, we are not using the, way, the, the Psi trial, okay? But uh, you, um, what you try to actually get it to go to zero, you need to do that, you know, if your walker tries to cross, you kill it. Okay, and this you're going to have this behavior. You're going to impose that for the, 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 the your solution is going to zero in the middle, and you should also, by the same token, also kill them if they try to cross the wall on the other side. Okay, and therefore what you're, you're going to have is you're going to have all the walkers in each pocket. Okay, now I put the barrier perfectly in the middle. Okay, so you're going to end up in the ground stage of both pockets, and it's okay, right? That's okay. You know, so your repetition value will be fine. You know? So it's a side side. You know? So you, you're going to have in each nodal pocket, but that's actually your solution. Is everybody okay with this? Hmm? So the, the numerical is, uh, the, 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 the numerical, let's say, procedure is uh, stable. Now you don't, don't have any more growing noise. But of course, the solution is exact because I placed the nodes uh, in the middle. Okay, and uh, um, and you find the best solution consistent from with the with, with where you have actually placed your nodes. Okay, I'm thinking, so, Claudia, maybe to bring up a question from that came up in HackMD. Very good, thank you. I guess this uh, rewinds a bit to an earlier place in your presentation, but could you please clarify how you solve the drift diffusion equation? You said we solve for each term separately, and then we put it all together. How? Oh God. Um, okay. So the way we did it last time was uh, um, the we're, we're back here. Okay. The way we did it last time was uh, uh, we didn't have such a term. Okay. Sorry. I'm doing. I'm using my hands. You can see I'm used to give lecture. Okay. So we didn't have the term here. Okay. Here we had a potential. What we did is we said first we did treat the kinetic uh, gauche. Then we treat the potential. Now we have a local energy. Okay, so the solution of such a thing will be the exponential with here, no longer the potential, but the local energy. Okay, and then you say I treat only the, the I, I throw away the other two pieces and I treat only this. And now here I need to do some approximation to actually get the drift term. Okay, um, and uh, but let's say mathematically, you are kind of, you can think mathematic, mathematically, you're treating the different pieces separately. And then like we had done in the simple cases, we rewrite it as a product, okay? Um, and mathematically, you can um, justify this um, based on what we call the Trotter theorem, that the exponential uh, based on some mass. But what I will do, because here I, I don't have it ready, what I will do, I will prepare one, I have one slide somewhere else, which I will add, which shows you how you actually handle the term in the middle, okay? Because otherwise I, I need to wave my hands and mathematically I cannot really wave my hands, okay? So uh, to the person, please be patient, I put it in the, uh, in the PDF, okay? And then look at it and you have two more days to ask me a question next week. Okay, good. Uh, not sure if I guess I, I go on. I hope he's okay. The person is a bit patient. Now we we were here. So other question on the on the chat. Nothing more. Right. Good. Now. So now uh, the problem is these nodes. These nodes. People are, are fascinated by the nodes. Okay, but the nodes really is very hard to know something about the nodes. Okay, there there are some colleagues of ours who spend a lot of time trying to understand. The topology of these nodes, okay? But let's see what it does it mean. So the nodes is the, the surface where your wave function, the, the wave function depends on R1 array, okay? So you have three N dimension here, okay? You set the wave function to zero. 
where the where the uh, the wave function changes signs. Okay, those are the nodes. Okay. So now you're having one condition, psi equal to zero. So your surface is D, where D is the dimensionality of your, of your problem, it can be one, two, or three, okay, minus one. So it's a huge dimension, okay? So this is from a paper by Seperly. So he uh, is a two-dimensional uh, um, electron gas, spin up, doesn't really matter, but we are having 161 um, electrons. So we are in two dimensions. So the, uh, uh, the dimension are 322, okay? So if you subtract one, it means that your nodes are 321 dimensional, which is huge, okay? And now what here we are showing here is a two-dimensional slice of such a surface, okay? What they did, what they did is they said, okay, fine, I have, I have uh, uh, these... Uh, uh, 161 electrons, okay? I place them down, okay? I put them all down, okay? And so these are all the, uh, the, the open dots. And then, then I take one of them and I start to move it around. And every time I cross, the, my meaning my wave function changes sign, I draw a line, okay? And so this is how such a two-dimensional slice of a 321-dimensional node surface look, okay? So guessing it would be impossible. Okay, we all agree on that, I guess. So is there really a bad beast? Okay, so and uh, <clears throat> so we know we have, there are some, there are, there are some things we know, for instance, uh, what we typically do, we divide the, um, we divide the, um, uh, the nodes into classes. Okay, so uh, here what I'm doing is uh, we, we are taking this is a, um, courtesy of Matthew Fulks, a colleague, we are taking two particles uh, in a box. So two particles in a box, uh, in a box, I'm sorry, yeah, in a one dimensional box. Okay, so having x1, x2. And the uh, coalescent point in such a simple case are the, so the line would be the ground state nodes, okay? But here we are having many more nodes. So this is an excited state, okay? So what you would do is you say, I place down my walker and my walker ended up here randomly, okay? And now I started to move it around until when, and every time I find a zero, I draw it, okay? Oh, I, I, I have this pocket, this is a pocket, okay? And now if I anti-symmetrize, I will get this plus over here, but I'm not covering your space, okay? So I, I have this. Then you, you, throw, you throw down again uh, your, uh, your walker randomly and you end up here, okay? You have a minus sign, you go around, you get all your, uh, your you know, here you go from minus to plus, here from minus to plus, you, you draw your nicely your nodes. Then you, um, you, let's say, permute, I'm sorry, anti-symmetrize, you permute and you get the other, the other thing. And you keep going like that, okay? You, you end up here, and then you permute, you go here. You, the last two cover is this one, you end up up here, and you, anti, un, you permute, I'm sorry, you permute, and you cover all space, okay? You got to cover all space eventually, you know, by doing this game. But let's say you cannot go from blue to green, or from green to, to yellow, let's say, or from yellow to orange, okay? So these are different classes, indeed. And this is, a, is an excited stage. Okay, so are people uh, uh, clear with what we are doing? Okay, so otherwise write in the chat. And now for uh, uh, a ground state though is, is a bit simpler, okay? So uh, if you're having um, a local potential, um, you can at least show, you can prove that all pockets are in the same class, okay? So if you start from just, again, two particles in one segment, you know, in one dimension, so you know that you're, you're having too many nodes to be an, a ground state here, okay? So we know that the line would be our nodes, okay? And this is what I start from. And then you, what you do is, let me go, tuck, okay, here, you kind of try to get rid of the nodes between these uh, class, these nodal pockets and these nodal pockets, okay? So you permute, okay? Maybe you smoothen it out. Now you go plus, 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 minus, 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 okay? And if where there is, you know, the crossing has smoothened it up, I end up with one domain and another domain, okay? So I end up, you know, these now nodes are in the are in the same class, okay? And I do the same, now I have a plus and minus, I'm sorry, doing with my hand, plus and minus, minus and plus, I flip 
the last two. And now you can see that you can just permute, you know, the, the lower part of the of the, the square, you know, the lower triangle, you just get the higher triangle. You have one class of nodes. Is that clear? Okay. So my point is if I place down my walker here, hmm, so since I, let's assume there are no more any nodes in between, and then I find this node, I flip it, I cover all space. Okay. So it's going to be in many dimensions, will be many, much more complicated. But the idea is that if in many dimensions you throw down a walker, you identify how your nodal surface actually looks in 3 n dimensional space, then you can just permute and you're going to cover all space. Okay, so that's, uh, but you know, we then we know, um, okay, so but then as, again, all of this is fantastic, but it's still not uh, immediately useful. So we need to go back uh, to use something about our trial wave function. Okay, and that's where I'm going to actually stop. So um, we worked very hard in variation of Monte Carlo. We had a good trial wave function. And of course, because we are dealing with electrons, it was anti-symmetric. Okay, and therefore, you know, this is really a cartoon. Let's assume you threw down your, uh, uh, your walker and your walker is uh, uh, jumping around. And here you're having, you know, this is your, uh, your, you have a nodal pocket identified, psi of r is equal to zero. And uh, uh, what you can do, you can use uh, your, the nodes of your tryaway function as the best approximation you actually have. Okay, and uh, we don't quite do this. Actually, we don't do this with, uh, in Champ. You can do something different, but you can imagine in a cartoonish manner that if the walker tries to cross, you kill it. Okay, and then you're actually staying inside. Uh, and uh, in, any, in any case, if you are permuting, assuming that your nodes are, uh, are, are taken from a reasonable, your starting nodes um, from a reasonable Hamiltonian, if you permute around, you will cover all. Of space, okay? So but what you're doing, you're really solving the Schrodinger equation now with a boundary condition. So you're doing a projection. We are still doing an imaginary time Schrodinger equation. So we are going to the lowest possible stage stochastically, but with the additional constraint that the zeros of this solution are the same as your tryaway function, okay? So in this is what you're finding is, the, is a fixed node solution. And now if you're doing diffusion Monte Carlo with important sampling, so where we were not just evolving psi, but we're evolving psi time psi trial, so pi, essentially this amount amounts to, to, to ask that pi remains positive. Okay? So it has only one sign. Okay, so so you what what what, what essentially you're doing Let's say, again, we're doing at the ground state, you're having some nodal pocket, you're solving inside, you're finding a bosonic solution inside our nodes, and then we are actually flipping it around. And if the nodes are correct, you get the correct solution. If the nodes are not correct, you will not get the correct solution. But for the ground state, you will be variational because you're solving the Schrodinger equation with a constraint. So you're going to be above the lower stage. Is it okay? I see some, something in the chat. Yeah, there's a question here. Is it possible to describe the motion in spatial confinement in one and two D using Gaussian type orbitals? Well, motion. Um, okay, I don't quite understand what motion means. Uh, um, the wave function. Okay, let me see. You still see this, the the the. We see the slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me go up then quickly because otherwise you, you get a headache. There are two things. I think it is a bit of confusion. Okay. So here, this is your trial wave function. Is what you have started to build yesterday. Okay. So you do a Koenigsham Gaussian orbital. We are, we are fine. You're using Gaussian gains, whatever you wish. And you get one determinant. You place a gesture, you optimize all your parameters, and you get an energy, minus five, okay? And you say, good or bad, I can get it, okay? So now here, the Monte Carlo is not used to modify the wave function, but just to actually compute the integral, the expectation value of the wave function on whatever operator you wish, okay? By sampling the square of this object. And Monte Carlo doesn't really care whether you're having Slater of Gaussian orbitals, okay? 
Now, once we go to diffusion Monte Carlo, you take this wave function, you sample a bunch of points according to psi squared, okay? And now you start to do diffusion Monte Carlo, you evolve them, and now you, you don't have the freedom to do whatever you want in evolving there. The green function, meaning the, the sandwich of this operator, which is projecting, is what's actually driving. And now we go here, one second. Okay, let me see, let's go here. Okay, so uh, maybe let me do maybe the simplest one here, you know. So here you're evolving, you know, you can see you have a time. So you start from your Kuneshama in, in uh, one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, doesn't matter. Um, Express in terms of Gaussian orbital, you start to, to, to evolve it, but now the evolution, the random walk, uh, you cannot do whatever you want. It's G. G is telling us how to, how to go, okay? But because we don't know, we don't know G, otherwise, we, if you knew it analytically, we, would, we wouldn't do, <laughs> then we would be all set. Um, we, we try to get an approximation. And, and this is the way, so the, the green function tells you how you have to move through space to actually go down to a better approximation than the one you started from, okay? And then since uh, moving with this is complicated, uh, we, uh, I mean, is, is inefficient, we actually, instead of sampling psi, we sampling psi times whatever you have gotten in variation of Monte Carlo, the best guess you have. So now then diffusion Monte Carlo for excited states. Um, so is it variational? Well, it is variational for lower stage. I usually often say loosely uh, in each symmetry, but actually is in, in each one dimensional irreducible representation, the symmetry group associated with your molecule, okay? So the point is, let's assume for a moment I'm doing a singlet and a triplet, and, um, and I will end up uh, they are different symmetries. They're not going to talk to each other, okay? Or I do uh, an A state, uh, an A1 and a B1 state, and they will not talk to each other, okay? So we'll end up in the, in the lowest stage in the symmetry class, okay? So the problem is if you're doing A1, A1, okay? And as I, as I said, the only thing you know uh, about the excited state is that you have the exact excited state if you had the exact nodal surface, okay? And therefore, the tri-wave function is even more important because you're enforcing anti-symmetry and you're also selecting the state. And as I said, you know, we don't observe a collapse. And usually, let's say for practically, also you're going to do practically, what we're going to have is uh, what we observe is that excited states approach from above. But you know, as a, as, as a, to play, I can give you some references uh, uh, where we play that you can see that you can also happily be below. Okay. So it's, uh, we verify that some type of wave function might bring you below, but that, that's bad wave function that no sensible uh, uh, chemistry or physicist will use. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to do excited state also, uh, I think Monday and Tuesday, but then we're going to do essentially two ground state in different classes. Okay, different symmetry. Good. So now, um, okay, so I think I have until 10.30, you know, 10.30 and so, and then we can just start to, to, to move to the, um, to the hands-on session. And if uh, I don't finish, uh, okay, so we can see Monday with Anthony what, what to do. Okay, so now have you solved all our problems? Uh, so, you know, we, we, the, the, the starting point was... Uh, we wanted to get rid of the, the bias of the wave function, but unfortunately, we ended up with diffusion Monte Carlo, where the result still depends on the nodes of the wave function. Okay, so uh, therefore, should we worry? Okay, many people, if you look in the literature, don't worry. Okay, <laughs> meaning there are a lot of calculations with a single determinant. Okay, and, uh, and here um, I'm showing some, <clears throat> so actually quite old calculation. Uh, is uh, the atomization energy for the G1 set. So you take a molecule, there's these are small molecules. So for people who are not, not maybe quantum chemists, um, um, the quantum chemists have developed a lot of uh, uh, databases, okay, where you're having molecules and, and, and very good results for these molecules against which you can compare your approximate treatment uh, of the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so this is atomization. So is the molecule, the energy of the molecule minus all the components, okay, all the, all the atomic energies. And now here is uh, these people try to do a game. They said, okay, first I take Hartwig Fock orbital. I take the Hartwig Fock orbitals, so I have Hartwig Fock nodes. 
uh, I, um, so they, actually not I, they uh, put a gastro factor, they optimize the gastro, and they left the orbital as they are. Okay? And then for all these molecules, they're mostly first and second row, they compute the atomization energy and the mean average deviation. And you're having that that's 3.1. I think it was an, uh, a simple triple basis. So it's, they didn't do anything you know, super sophisticated you know, with their basis. It's a reasonable calculation. And you know, such a calculation is already quite comparable to what is considered the golden standard in quantum chemistry, which is couple clusters, single, double, parentheses, triple, with an augmented uh, Q quadruple basis. So these are very large. So these bases are Gaussian um, bases. And I think Anthony will go maybe a bit over it. So uh, is what you are expressing your orbitals entering the determinants. Okay. So this is a large basis of uh, atomic orbitals. And now this is um, a, 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 stand, a standard quantum chemistry type of calculation. We have a 3.1 versus a 2.8. And this is really a no brainer. Okay. Now you can say, fine, I do a little bit of work. You know, I have my gastros later and I optimize the, not just the gastro, but also the orbital. I go from 3.1 to 2.1. Hey, I beat CCSD with all this very long acronym. Okay. And then you can say, well, you know, I do something even, uh, I try at least to do something a little bit better. I put in a, a few determinants and we go actually to something like 1.2. Okay. And this is a mild effort. For nowadays, you can really do it uh, um, simply. As I said, you know, this is a no-brainer. Champ can do this very, very, very easy, and is also this one as well. Okay. Now here are some uh, also some old calculations. So I'm not showing you, you know, no, uh, I'm not showing something that requires go figure out, go figure what kind of uh, uh, which requires Lumi. Okay, let's put it like that. Uh, these are uh, a different data set, S22. So, and they were looking at non-covalent interactions, so non, non, nine compounds. And, uh, um, and here they really use the recipe. They really said, okay, fine, we, use, uh, we do a DFT calculation, we get the B3P orbital, we plug them in the determinant, uh, we do this particular basis, uh, triple, polarization, whatever, and we look at what is the mean average deviation with respect to the couple with respect to a couple of classes. Before, I'm sorry, we are looking with respect to experiments, okay? Here we are comparing to experiments and here we are comparing or whatever to, no, maybe, maybe not even whatever to the best available, uh, even, even better calculation, okay? And here we are comparing again, couple, against couple cluster, clusters, okay? And, uh, and, and, and the error is very small. Okay, so is a kilocalorie per mole is sub very much sub kilocalorie per mole. And this is really, in some sense, a, is really a very, very simple calculation. Um, so, um, and this is something which is more along the line of what we were discussing before about the nodes. This is an honest uh, slide, um, and that's what we are showing is an excited state, which actually is a simple excited state in the sense that uh, the ground and excited state have different symmetry. So I can really do separate calculation. And now here, uh, these are all uh, variational full diffusion um, diffusion empty, okay? And you can say, fine, I do a hard to calculation for the ground stage. I want the excited state. is a pi to pi star excitation. I use a homo to lumo. So I, I take an electron, I, 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 I promote it. And my gap is a 5.2. And the best available estimate are a couple, well, extrapolated for CI. This is a calculation by, by Anthony uh, with a, probably an augmented... Uh, uh, maybe an augmented double basis. Uh, this also is an augmented double basis. This is three, most presumably at least a triple augmented. Um, but let's say, okay, so we're very far away. We are like, you know, 0.3 V uh, off, which is huge. So just using a, doing a no brain is not going to work. And then you can say, fine, I add a single excitation. I optimize. I even worsen my gap. The NC doesn't seem to care much. Then I start to do a cast. So here I just really decide... Uh, I just decide by hand which determinant, well, I don't quite uh, decide the determinant, but I decide by hand uh, um, uh, over which set of orbitals I will build my determinant. So there is a lot of chemical intuition going in here. You know, I say, well, here I want to correlate this electron in this pi orbital. Here I put more pi orbital. Here I put sigma orbital. And it's a very 
how can I say, it's very tedious because uh, if you do all this calculation, you need to have a good <laughs> chemical science, and sometimes we don't have such a good chemical science. And still, uh, the VNC is improving every time we optimize the full wave function, okay? So no bias in that sense, okay? So we optimize all parameters in variation of Monte Carlo. DNC always helps, but wow, it's painfully slow, okay? And now here we are using actually quantum package, and that's SIPSI. Okay, so and uh, Anthony will explain it next week. So we are we are just going beyond a single determinant that's thousand to eighteen thousand determinant, but is a is a at least an automatic way to select. Okay, so for me is much better. I don't need to worry about that, and the results are. Uh, that are very, very, very good, meaning a VNC, DNC on top of each other. They are within chemical accuracy of the best one, even with, even with thousand determinants, which is not a lot, okay? So, but what I'm showing here is that diffusion Monte Carlo is not always a panacea. The nodes matter, okay, as we said. Sometimes they don't, but sometimes they do. So, having the ability to play with your wave function, I believe, is quite important, okay? And we often spend a lot of time doing so. Okay, but the effort on the wave function can really pay off. Okay. Now, um, what Trump cannot yet do, even though Edgar is uh, working on it, is one of the people helping, um, is solid state calculation. And there are other codes who can do that, you know, QNC pack, Turbo VB, and even Casino. Okay, well, and also Casino. Okay, and uh, um, and and here I'm showing a. Uh, uh, work indeed, you know, so I think, you know, Turbo, it's Turbo VB, um, where they are looking at uh, the superconducting material. They are actually trying to understand the magnetic properties. And uh, here are different uh, magnetic ordering. So they start with different guesses for the wave function, and they can really guess some very accurate lattice constant, mo bulk moduli, and, you know, the band dispersion. Okay, so and I'm not going to, it's not really um, my work, so I'm not going to go more into it, but let's say you're going to find quite some nice calculation on solids, and there, there is, uh, in some sense, much less competition, <laughs> uh, let us say, from standard quantum chemical method because uh, often you just cannot apply them and we can easily handle solids instead, okay? Now, so uh, let me see, how am I doing? What time is it? Yeah, good. So the uh, in summary, um, the fixed node is um, easy to do. You're gonna see, you just, um, it's not difficult to do, meaning my point is in that you need to, it's more painful to build the wave function and optimize it and to do the DNC. It's stable, so we don't have, uh, once to do fixed node, uh, you don't have this fermioni problem. It's accurate enough in many applications. Sometimes you need to play a bit. And we can do large system. Uh, and, uh, you know, by playing a bit, we can really also get subtle correlation physics, okay? And so, but as I said, you know, playing with VNC is often useful or needed, okay? Now, there was a question at the beginning about derivatives. And the answer is yes, we can do derivatives, okay, in variation of Monte Carlo. We're also trying to do them in diffusion Monte Carlo, but it's a bit more uh, complicated, but we are working on it, okay, so also as, as a community. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and here what I'm showing is that, you know, uh, so, you, so you have a wave function, okay, so you do your sampling and you get your energy, but maybe you also want a derivative. And, uh, um, and this, uh, so you need to compute a lot of things, the derivative of the wave function, the Hamiltonian, if you want the action acting on the derivatives. So it's a lot of objects. And if you do it straightforwardly, uh, it can be very, very expensive. Okay. And here what I'm showing is uh, we are going from a very small system, that's about a dyne, C486 to C60H62. And here we are, we, are, we, are, we are showing the cost of doing energy plus derivative with respect to energy law. Sorry. And so what we do is we take a single determinant wave function and we increase the system. Okay, we go from C4 to C60. And therefore your number of parameters is growing. Okay, so number of parameter grows from uh, whatever, I don't know, few hundreds, whatever, to five in 10 to the four. And, and the ratio remains always less than three. Okay, here I'm showing instead interatomic forces. So this is the cost of computing uh, uh, interatomic forces in addition to uh, energy with respect to the cost of computing the energy alone. And here what we are doing is again, boot a dime to this very long object. We are not using linearity to accelerate things. 
okay? On the x-axis, uh, we are having the number of the terminals. So here we are also, also increasing the complexity of the wave function, the, the, the yeah, so the complexity of the wave function. And we can see that the, the cost uh, is, again, below. 3.5, okay? So um, for uh, all sizes and also inclu including, uh, increasing, I'm sorry, the number of the terminals, okay? So this means uh, that if you are willing to do a QNC calculation, you can get out forces with a factor of three effort, okay? So once you have, you know, uh, yeah, so we, we can do it. And moreover, what is important that many people have worked also on many optimization tools to use the gradients and whatever information to optimize the wave function. And so we can start to actually treat Quantum Monte Carlo as internally consistent in the sense that, okay, fine, you give me your, your, your connection to terminal, but once I put a Jastro, I optimize it. You give me your CI expansion, but I optimize everything. Okay, so uh, I still need uh, some input for the functional form in some sense, but at least after all parameters are consistent. Okay. Question on this? I'm, I'm wrapping up, eh? I think. Um, now, there was a question at the beginning uh, yesterday. Are there alternatives to fixed no DNC? And what, what we cover here was really a real space. Quantum Monte Carlo, but you can also choose to do to move in determinantal space, meaning you have, you know, as I said, you know, you have a single uh, particle basis of orbital coming out of your, your of your Konesham, you have the occupied and the and the virtual, and then you create all these determinants, you know, by exciting, and now you're you what you do, you do a walkers in this determinant space. Okay, so you don't work in first quantization, but in second quantization, and there are. Uh, different flavors. Yeah. Good. So uh, it was mentioned auxiliary field QNC uh, originally by Shiwe Zhang and collaborators. It's a bit too difficult to explain it uh, here. Um, there are codes to do that. Um, it is the scaling is uh, um, nominally uh, is nominally more expensive. It appears to be less affected, but what they have, you know, their fermion sign problem is cured with a fixed phase, okay? So it was seen that uh, often they are less uh, um, troubled, okay? Uh, by, by this, then we are in diffusion Monte Carlo, but that's not always. I was talking to some people, not always, but, you know, it's a very powerful method and they can also do a reasonably large system, okay? And they also can do solids. And then there is full CIQNC, which is related to what... Uh, also, Anthony will explain. So again, you are doing a diffusion Monte Carlo. You're really solving against these, uh, trying to solve against these imaginary time uh, um, Schrodinger equation. But now what you're actually evolving are really the CI coefficient. And so your walkers move, as I said, in the terminata space, okay? While what Anthony will describe on Monday is more trying to go to the full CI, so really covering a lot of the terminants, but in a deterministic manner, okay? So, um, so these are, are very interesting uh, uh, alternatives, okay, where colleagues of ours are, are working on. So now, as I said, the beauty of QNC is uh, uh, highly parallelizable. So especially VNC, you can think, you know, uh, Anthony was saying it, you can really just average whatever you find on different nodes, okay? It can really be trivial if you're interested in an energy. Your radio optimization, uh, Already with the optimization, you're having that the cores start to talk to each other, okay, depending a bit how you implemented it. So, but let's say a, a, an energy calculation is really trivial parallelization. In DNC, the walkers are not really independent because you want to keep your population stable, but let's say the communication, again, are not too many. Mm -hmm. And so you can take advantage of parallel computers. And here are really going back to a very, very old calculation, 2001. You know, these people were at some national lab in the States, so we don't know what kind of computers had even back then. But, you know, they were really able already at those times to do quite large, probably with expensive calculation, uh, uh, um, uh, clusters, and they were trying to look at different type of bases and what to use and how to get a better scaling. Okay, so you mean we can do larger systems um, and, uh, um, and and really take, take advantage of a coming, uh, uh, you know, super, well, uh, existing and upcoming supercomputers.
Now, uh, of course, if you start to go to larger system, uh, funny things happen, you know? So we, we all play with small system, have a very good grasp of what's going on. And I think a thesis is very interesting. This came out um, last year. Um, I think it's a group of Kachenko. Uh, and again, the interest is in benchmarking uh, uh, weak interactions. And so uh, uh, here the people are using a couple cluster and diffusion Monte Carlo. Diffusion Monte Carlo very much a single uh, determinant, okay? And there are also some simplification here and there, but also a couple cluster. This is uh, uh, kind of exactly sure I'm not such an expert, but let's say it's still a linear scaling couple cluster. So there are also some uh, approximation to be able to handle such large system. What is interesting is that when we go to a small system, we're all agreeing, we're all saying, ah, oh, fantastic. You know, we're all on top of, you know, we're all agreeing, we're all very good friends. And then you go to something which is large and you start to see, you know, that all these approximation we are, we are, we are putting in are actually playing a, a role on the best, let's call it, you know, the best, the best approaches out there to actually do this type of calculation. That's very interesting. You know? So there is, there, is, there is room to play, okay, to understand where this is coming from. And now just uh, really, and then I stop, uh, um, ongoing research. As I said, you know, the trial form of the wave function is, uh, is, um, is very important. Uh, and uh, uh, so people have also, you know, this is one, one of the, the first example is Matthew, um, Matthew Fulks, uh, uh, is it called DeepMind, I think, is uh, playing with this. So they try to actually represent the, the many body wave function using a neural network architecture. Okay, and uh, um, and there are different. So this is called a Fermi net. People play with a Pauli net, and there is also work in this direction. Okay, so the Monte Carlo is then only used to sample this object. Okay, so but the representation is really a neural network wave function. Then of course, uh, uh, if you want to be internally consistent, there is a lot of there are some issues with the fact that uh, we have noise. So there is a lot of trying to push optimization techniques to larger system because you don't want to make to want to make your optimizer um, also um, how can I say simpler and simpler as you go to either larger system or uh, many many parameters okay and maybe you have more noise therefore okay so there is work in this direction uh, there is more work on transition methods and not. Uh, but there are colleagues working on it. And of course, alternative to fixed node, like as I discussed, are, are very important. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we are not in competition, but it's all uh, complementary, complementary techniques. And now uh, I am... Uh, I cover electronic structure because that's uh, that's what 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 I do, what Anthony does. But you can also use QNC for strongly correlated system, you know, Hubbard, TJ model, quantum speed system. People use it for um, uh, quantum fluids, uh, atomic clusters, uh, nuclear. Actually, that's where. Uh, it originated in nuclear nuclear physics, and even you know a lattice gauge theory. Uh, apparently can use uh, this type of techniques. And here I really focus on, on, on zero temperature, so ground states and okay, selected uh, states, but you can also play finite with finite temperature and then you end up in uh, Passi Integral Monte Carlo, which is a, again another class of Monte Carlo approaches. And I think, uh, let me see, and yes, uh, and I stop here. And, uh, and I stop here. I think very almost perfect timing. And we can, uh, so if there are questions, I'm happy to answer. Then I would say that we can move on to the hands on. Mm -hmm. So there are questions in Hack and B, and they are being oh, yeah. answered as we speak. Oh, that's very good. Thank you, Anthony. Okay, so do, am I needed there? <laughs> you are needed on one of the questions which paper to cite for CHAMP? Oh, that's a very good question. Oh, that's such an excellent question. Well, okay, so again, that's a very good question. We had to write such a paper. Well, uh, okay, um, so... As a, uh, so yeah, that's a very good question. We, we are writing such a we have to write. We are writing is an optimistic statement. We plan such a paper also by the summer because at the moment we are. We are I always cite my own website, which is silly because it's practically empty. Uh, so um, 
Yeah, so this is silly. I mean, so we have been going for quite a few years, citing a website which gets no uh, no citation. So yes, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna write a paper. So wage. And again, guys, if you really plan to use it, please don't hesitate to, to contact me. We are very happy to help you. And uh, we give you access to the GitHub already ahead of time. It will be open very soon. And um, I mean, Victor can, uh, is here. Victor has been helped. I hope he agrees that he's been helping his uh, struggles uh, with Champ. Okay, so um, yeah. So let me share my screen and then we can start yeah so uh, Mindra, you will uh, you will show what to do how it works yeah. and then yes. it sort of a, a quiet moment for everyone to do it themselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then when we have that uh, self uh, time uh, people can jump into the breakout rooms if they want yeah. to ask perfect yeah. okay so a quick uh, recap so we we tried yesterday to do a vmc calculation using hart fog orbitals and uh, dft orbitals uh, many of you succeeded in uh, getting the energy i can see it here uh, that's good people tried uh, different parameters num different number of cores that's good uh, uh, and one question one comment was uh, uh, there by anthony i guess uh, uh, to change the the seed seed parameter <clears throat> so uh, i'll show you the what is the keyword for that so default is this seed it's a, a integer with 16 uh, digits so you can change this number and you will get uh, a, a different set of random numbers It's the keyword is sealed, which goes in the general module. <clears throat> okay, so for today, so we did this. Um, okay, yeah, and we did the yesterday's calculations with the uh, Jastro factor to be one. So basically, there was no Jastro. Uh, now we will introduce the Jastro and uh, optimize it and see if the energy value we get is improved or not. Uh, here is the uh, expression uh, for Jastro factor, which has, let's say, electron nucleus term, electron electron terms, and electron electron nucleus terms. Uh, and those those expressions are uh, given in a file. It's called Jastro. You can name it anything, but here we have named it Jastro.jas uh, like this. So basically, it has some parameters which are dependent on uh, how many types of atoms you have in your system. So for H2O, there is one O and then H. Uh, and there are five parameters. So basically here. So the first number five, which we see was N odd A, and the other one was N odd B, and there is no N odd C uh, for this. Uh, there is no, the third term. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and I think this is the scaling factor, uh, and this is the electron-electron term. And we are not using electron-electron nucleus, so uh, that is blank. This is our jastro.start file. So we'll start with this, uh, and then we will optimize. So for optimization, you will need something called jastro.dare. Uh, and again, you will have uh, the terms for each unique atoms. Uh, for, let's say, the, the first one is it, which goes from three to six. Uh, and H has four parameters. Uh, o and H has four parameters. And for electronic term, we have two to six. And if you uh, if you want to include the the third term, uh, you might have this line also. But currently, we are using only the the first two terms. Okay. And the input file now changes slightly. Uh, you need to add uh, these two statements. So you load Jastro which is jastro.start. So you just copy this and save uh, into jastro.start. The second part, second block goes into jastro.dare. 
and there is optimization module where you say that you are going to optimize the wave function but not all parts but you are just optimizing the just room so it it is enabled now and then the optimization method sorry <clears throat> optimization method is srn uh, which is internal in champ uh, number of iterations uh, this is uh, maximum number of blocks and the parameters related related to the srn method uh, the VMC block, you, we keep the 20 same. We reduce the number of uh, blocks here. Uh, and let's let's see how how we improve the energy. Uh, so uh, it's Ravindra. Yes. Go back. Okay. Maybe maybe. Okay. So before you had 20, which we don't change because it's larger than the out you know, 10 times the autocorrelation time. Yes. And now here we reduce the uh, VNC block uh, because at the end you start with a bad gesture. So you shouldn't do, is, there is no need to compute an energy to 1 milliard tree accuracy if you're gaining, uh, I don't know, if you're going to gain uh, 1 heart tree, okay? So we reduce the blocks, but let's say if you go up, uh, go up a bit, uh, uh, Ravindra, you're having an yes. N block max, which is 1,000, okay? So um, so the, the code will slowly, let's say, go from 10 to 1,000 because as your wave function increases, you, 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 you are better off, you know, getting a smaller error bar, okay? So sorry that I... Yeah, yeah, okay. that, that's good, yeah. Okay, so that that part, optimizing optimization of JASTRO for, let's say, hard tree fork, is is given in example zero three, so you should copy the example the tutorial folder from the project directory to your home directory, and then you can go in example zero three. So here we create justro dot start, and we paste this. Okay, so we have all we okay, we haven't created the setup yet. So what we can do is import the convert script from I think example zero one here. So the convert script is like this, the, the no, Python script. No, 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 Ravindra, let's not start from uh, from, uh, from Adam and Eve. Uh, you have, or we, we can copy no, no, the full directory. Copy. Okay, so you want them to, to start from scratch? Is it... uh, it's up to them. Uh, because they you, want... they've already done a thing, they've already done a, the, the, the one, with, they can copy the directory, uh, the directory, is. Okay, so sorry uh, that, but otherwise you make them do a lot of work. So they have a, a, a two-body, a, a hard H2O hard three fork already done, correct? Yes, yes. And they so, should copy the H2O hard three fork to uh, H2O hard three fork of just two body. Otherwise you make them every time redo the setup. No, no, no. Uh, it will create the same. Let's say we can copy from the pool directory here, sorry. Yeah. And these two files. Okay. So, sorry. so basically, basically we have all the files needed now. And what what was missing was these two files, which are from the tutorial web page. And then if you look at the input file it should have the, the corresponding file names here so we have the geometry file in the pool directory the basis pointer file in the pool directory the orbitals and determinants are in the same directory again these two in the same so up to this point up to this part it was common to the first example now we have added the optimization module and we have reduced the number of blocks here. Okay, now, now we can sub, uh, let's check the submission script again. 
So example 03, and we are submitting the HF just to optimization. Okay, somehow it's taking a longer time to show up. Okay. So let's examine the output file. Uh, let's see if it is completed. Oh, yes. So let's examine the output. So here it prints the whatever it has read from the input file, the geometry, the pseudo potential, uh, the basis information, just of uh, file, just of parameters, the derivative parameters, <coughs> the the, ba the grid, basis on the grid file, and the VMC calculation. I think there is some issue with the file system. I am on a different login node and it's fine there, actually. Okay, I then I log out and log in again. Yeah, I can see that your job is still uh, it's running. Running, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Perfect. So, so we wanted to optimize Jastro, and now, and we gave uh, 20 uh, number of iterations. Now it has optimized the Jastro, and it has created 20 separate set of parameters for us. And I think okay. So yeah, this is the final, and then we can compare. Okay, so since we were, we were optimizing, we can print the energy uh, after each iteration, and now it has improved a lot. St starting from hard to fog, we gain a lot of, uh, we improve the energy a lot. And if we examine, let's say the last JASTRO file, which is ITER 20, you will see those zeros are now replaced by some numbers. So, so for the next part, we will use this file, which is now JASTRO optimized, uh, optimum JASTRO, and use it. Okay, so uh, uh, for Ravindra? Yeah. Maybe also show the, the starting Jastron again to them. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So uh, as you can see, there are a lot of, lot of zeros here. But what we have done is uh, we have, there is also 0 0.5. Mm, there is a 0 0.5 where there is the dB, the electron-electron. And that's the famous CASP. Okay, so the point is, uh, we don't have, we, you don't start from, the first iteration is not Hartree-Fock. It's Hartree-Fock times a Jastro, where we only implement, uh, we impose a cast condition, 0, 0.5. We put this one because it's better to start from a one and a zero, but uh, the point is you will not recover. The first step is not the Hartree-Fock. It's just the Hartree-Fock with a very bad Jastro, okay? And then you need to optimize everything to make it good, okay? So anything, I think uh, this this part is good. Uh, we can move on to the next one. So should we do the DFT or should we continue with the hard tree folk? So here, the fourth example is actually DFT optimizing Jastro. So should we let should, them do it? What do you think? Uh, or should I explain the... Ah, uh, the DNC and then the one who are fast can go to the DNC. Fine. Yeah, okay. So, mm. So we go to example 05 where 
we use that just optimum Jastro. If you if you look into the input file, we we are using the Jastro from the earlier calculation, the example 03, because this is for Hartree Fock. So here you need to copy the last Jastro and I think the name was let me check the name. Okay. Let's copy the setup again. We have the setup. Now let's examine the input file again. So what we need is already there. We have provided the, the new Jastro. So since, since we are doing a DMC calculation, uh, we will be generating new configurations. And this will be for each processor. Since if you examine the script here, I think we are using 128. Uh, course yeah so so this is a new number which we were, we were not putting earlier but for DMC calculation you will need this number so because we will be generating initial configuration for DMC now there is a DMC input file this is slightly different the mode is different the mode of calculation so the the script will be also different because there's a different executable to run this job. This part is common. This is common. There is a, a different module which is blocking DMC. Uh, so it uses the 100 configurations which we, we which is the number we put in the earlier VMC input file. Uh, and this depends on the, the, the tau of DMC. Uh, which you will see in the next example. If you reduce this, you have to equivalently increase this number by the same factor. And this is the trial energy, which uh, you can put as the VMC energy. And this is the algorithm uh, for the DMC. And if we look into the script, so here we will do the VMC calculation first. Uh, it will produce a set of files uh, which are same as these many numbers. So each processor will create a new configuration file. We will combine them in a single file which will be read by the DMC. Okay, so here the executable is different. It's a DMC.move1 and the DMC input file, DMC output file and the error. And later on, once the calculation is complete, we can delete uh, the temporary files and the configurations. Okay. It's all the VMC is already done. Now it has, I think it's DMC is running, so we can do, yeah. Okay. So DMC is also over. I think I think we can remove the temporary file. Uh, I think we can compare the energies. <clears throat> So 
So we, I think this, yeah, we this is VMC energy, and then this is the last energy reported by the DMC, and the error in, in the energy. The correlation time also discuss, Ravindra. Oh yes, uh, now it has increased. Uh, to 3.4. So that number will be, if you look into the DMC input, that number is corresponding to the, uh, uh, sorry, here, this one. Uh, it should be at least 10 times, this number, number of blocks should be at least 10 times larger than the, the correlation time, which we see. Now, if you do with a different tau, let's say if you reduce the tau, uh, you will see a different correlation time, and this will be different. I think that is example 06. Yeah. Yes, so here the tau we reduce from 0 0.5 to 0 0.2 and uh, the number of steps increased by the same factor. And everything else is the same. It's the same trial energy. I, I think uh, they can try now this example also and uh, let's see how they do they can do the hot fork the to fork and dft and then do the dnc or how, how yeah. did you order them ravindra so currently it's uh, so five six are dmc calculations okay uh, and three four, four. three four fourth one is for dft and seven eight are same uh, DFT, but uh, DMC calculations. Okay, so everyone is on their own to try this out. Uh, yes. So any questions which are sort of generally interesting uh, could be just brought up here in the main room. But if you have like a technical question, something's not working, please uh, just jump into a, a breakout room and we'll make sure to help you there. There was a question uh... In the chat about whether it's always need, needed to do the extrapolation, uh, and Anthony was very correct. I Meaning, he said uh, that yes, you should do it. Uh, um, but as I was saying also in the in the lecture, if you have um, if you're looking at an energy difference, you might look at how the energy difference is converging. So you do a few times step and see that you're actually converged. But that comes a bit with experience. Uh, sorry to disturb everybody. I was just saying the. Yeah, I think then uh, if there are more, no more questions, we can start uh, example 9, 10, and 11. So this in this example, uh, I'll show you the input file. So here we are optimizing both Jastro and orbitals. Uh, and that's, I think that's the only change. We have an optiter 20. Uh, I think we increase this to 1000. Mm, yeah. And here we are using the DFT optimal Jastro from the previous step. <clears throat> Let me see if I have the... Example nine.
Okay, and the pull directory. So, Ravindra, what have you done? Because you didn't speak much. Uh, yeah, in this, uh, we are optimizing both Jastro and Orbitals. So, start from the, the input. So, we activate the optimization of Orbitals by putting one here. This is Jastro optimization. And we are having uh, 20 iterations for optimization. And also explain an XTORB? Uh, maybe, maybe you yeah. should help. Yeah, you know, sure. Uh, so here, uh, an XTORB is, um, so you're having a certain number of orbitals. And, if, and the way we optimize them, uh, we optimize the occupied orbitals, we mix them with the unoccupied ones, okay? So if you want to optimize all orbitals, huh? all parameters in the orbitals, uh, set an uh, extra orbital to the larger than the, well, equal to the total number of orbitals you have in, uh, in, uh, in the SAO file, okay? And then uh, he's going to take care of doing what he has to do. Uh, I'm not sure if it was clear. So and it's, no, it's not. I can see somebody shaking. No. Okay. Suppose you have a hard to fork determinant. Okay. You're having. A, I don't remember how many here are occupied. You're having an up is equal to four. You will have four orbitals occupied. But let's say because of the basis, you have. A, a, a Ravinda, can you do a more for the SEO? Yeah. Thank you. These are the LCAO, okay? So there are 24 uh, um, atomic orbitals and uh, 
uh, quantum package generated 23, that's the first one, 23 orbital. I guess one orbital was discarded because of, I guess, linearity, linear dependencies. So you had 23 orbital available. And of this one, you only occupy four to do a Hartree Fock or, uh, in any case, a single determinant out of this orbital. Okay. Now, if you want to, uh, to optimize for the HOMO, you can start to mix. You can write the new HOMO as a HOMO mixed with a LUMO, mixed with the LUMO plus one, and so on and so forth. That's a different way than just moving the, the coefficient, but it's equivalent, okay? So you're having, a, it is equivalent. And uh, uh, so an external orbital tells you how many of these external orbital beyond the four you want to mix in. Okay, so if you set now, um, if you set an extorbit to 24, you're okay because you know, okay, 24 is more than you need because it's 24 minus mm. 4, but the code takes care of it. It says, oh my God, what a big number. Let's do them all. Okay, and even Ravindra in his example had 100, which is more than enough because there are only 23 orbital in total. Now, is it clear? Okay, if not, I answer also later. So see, he has a hundred there, which is more than enough. That means, you know, please optimize them all. But you could also decide that you mix, you know, whatever, you mix the 10 after the, 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 the homo. If it costs you too much, you know, you want, you know, because other one energetically more, more in, most important, maybe whatever, you know. Mm. Vindra, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, and then, no, no problem. Yeah. Then we can see the energy is optimized. Yeah, I think in this calculation, we started with the already optimized Jastro. Uh, and now, in addition to that, we are optimizing the orbitals. So we, we start from here, and then we improved on the energy. We, we, we gain a 10, a 10, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Really fast. Yeah. <laughs> we gain a 10 milliard, three, but, um, yeah. and you can see that, you know, you use a bit less uh, blocks at the beginning, uh, and then you go to a larger number of blocks. If you do grab yeah. MBLK, Uh, you can see that you go from 100 to 1,000, you know? So, um, okay, it's, it's that's, yeah, sorry. Uh, that's, that's what the NBLK max uh, is about. And, and then maybe in the directory, you're having a lot of files now. Yeah, but and you know, yeah. similar to Jastro, uh, now you have uh, optimum... Uh, orbital files. So you can just open this and you will see the coefficient, orbital coefficients uh, changed now. Uh, is it clear? Uh, there's one uh, question. Can hmm. we visualize these orbitals? Oof. Um, yeah, that's a very good question, actually. We had found a way to put them back into mold long ago. Uh, at the moment, we don't. I wonder, and here I'm asking Anthony, whether we can do something with TRXIO, but... Yes, we have a, a converter from TRXIO to mold format. Good. So, so, so I can... You can mm. give the link in... Uh... Yeah, but then we need to actually also output them uh, in TRXIO format. Uh, you see what I mean? Yeah. Ah, you mean the optimal orbitals? Yeah. Optimal orbitals. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, let's say, okay, so that's, uh, that's something we, we did it at some, some stage. We haven't done it recently. And yeah, maybe something we should is a good, uh, good question, a good hint. We should uh, re-enable it. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so if that is clear, then we can move to uh, example 10, which is again DMC calculation. But it will use the optimized Jastro 
from the previous and optimize orbitals. So if you look into the <coughs> input file, we'll use the orbitals which were optimized in the previous folder and the JASTRO from the previous. So that's the only change here. Yeah. And then let's copy those files. Uh, let me copy the name. So we did 20 iterations. We can pick the last one as final and Let's check the input file again. Yeah, again, uh, similar to earlier calculation, uh, we will have 100 configurations to be generated for the DMC. Yeah, which and is 100 per car. No? Yeah, per, per core, yes. Uh, and we'll start with the tau 0 0.05, the trial uh, energy, and the same number of configurations. So if you look at, look at the script, first we will do the VMC calculation, and from each core we will have configurations. We we'll combine them together into one file. And that file will be used by the DMC. Uh, and then, uh, then we'll remove the temporary files. Before that, I need to copy the setup. already done. Yeah, I think that's it. So here you have TCOR 3.38, and we use N step 60. That's good enough. And uh, this is the energy, DMC energy for tau 0 0.05. We can remove. Yeah, and similar to the other calculation, in this one, we will change only the tau. Uh, and uh, do the same calculation. We'll make sure that you have changed this number. So in this file, in this folder, you already get the input file. So make sure that you have this number different. Copy the JASTRO and orbitals. Uh, 
hand. Okay, there was some problem. Uh, Okay, so if you look at the script, here we are not repeating the VMC calculation. But for, for DMC to run, you need the MC configs uh, from the previous folder. You can reuse it. You don't have to re regenerate them. So let's copy them. Uh, example 10, MC configs. Then you can submit. So a quick question from the Zoom chat. Uh, can we visualize the orbitals? This came in six minutes ago. I had answered. Oh, sorry. OK, I missed it. No, it's OK. No. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be clear, the MC configs contains the, 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 the configuration of the initial workers, which will then evolve, which are gotten from the VNC okay? for all the cores. Yeah. Yeah, I think the w one of the users had a file permission problem, uh, Thor. Maybe you can help him. Yeah, uh, whoever that was, uh, let's jump into a breakout room. Let's go, let's see, we can jump into troubleshooting too. Yeah. So any Lumi file permission problems, let's discuss them in breakout room. Troubleshooting too. Okay, so this calculation is done. Uh, so let's compare the results. <clears throat> let's search for this term. So the first one corresponds to tau 0 0.05 and the second one is 0 0.02 and the, the correlation time has changed accordingly. And to really know the energy, you should do more time steps and get an extrapolation. Yeah. Okay. But on Monday, we start to move to excited states. So you do two states, so you yeah. can more compare. Yeah, sorry. And Ravindra, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was highlighting. So this is uh, a different uh, topic, I think. So we should leave this for the next two days. But there, because we compare, uh, let's say, there we have a better cancellation of, uh, well, we, we don't need to do many, many time steps. You can just check that things are kind of stable on the excitation energy. But next Monday, Monday, say, so otherwise we yeah. confuse you.
Yeah, and if you have any any problem, like you, if you are not unable, if you are unable to run any calculation, or if you have file problem issue, then please uh, put that in the chat, so you can proceed with the tutorial. Yeah, the, Claudia, there is one question on the putting the, the results okay, of yeah. CHAMP back into T-Rex IO. Huh. That's a bit related to the question before about the visualization. Yeah. Uh, no, at the moment we are just, uh, and that maybe I'll also let Anthony further comment because then we need to modify or create a new file. Uh, so at the moment, let's say what we do is that there is... Um, there are things, so there are two ways, like, like Ravindra is doing now, that you know, all the files are present and we substitute uh, one file. You could also use the whole or original TRXIO and by loading the orbitals, the new orbitals, you kind of lose the previous information, but we are not putting it back into TRXIO. Um, so we can, yeah. we may uh, like create a separate TRXIO file for each iteration, each optimized orbital. Oof, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or every thought number of orbitals, uh, don't yeah, yeah. every thought number of iteration, or not to create too many things. But yeah, yeah. Or you could also have a script that where you choose which one you want to put back in the TXIO file. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, we are just reading it. Uh, we are not writing anything back into TXIO. I think actually, Victor. We can yeah. do it like it's it's not that difficult. I think Victor had done a Python script to just put it back. Yes, it's at the Python version of the T-Rex IO. Yeah. There was a question in the chat before, uh, in the chat on the um, hack, okay. uh, whatever, about, you know, um, having an electron nucleus nucleus. So even the electron nucleus, uh, you know, if you optimize the orbit, the electron nucleus also is less relevant, you know, so it's more important if you don't optimize the orbital. Uh, because if you think, you know, you start from DFT orbitals, which give you a very good density. Now you put in an electron-electron, which re repels electron, and you screw up the density. And so you, the electron nucleus helps you. But if you optimize the orbitals, it's not needed. And the orbitals also have electron nucleus-nucleus, if you see what I mean. So is the, what is mostly urgent to put in is the electron-electron the electron electron and okay fine and the electron nucleus but if you optimize is really the electron electron and the electron electron nucleus so it's uh, five minutes to one of course everyone should just continue working as you want on these exercises they're online and you have access to lumi and so on do you want to wrap up uh, uh claudia or ravendra uh maybe claudia yeah um we are a pup. <laughs> I'm not sure. So I hope we see you on Monday. Um, so um, please prepare questions. So we, we uploaded, um, so I uploaded the PDF for the, the lecture. If you, have, you know, prepare questions for us, I mean, we're quite happy to, to help. Uh, play with the code and uh, um, yeah, and then we talk. Uh, so somebody's saying that the reservation is not so somebody's asking whether the reservation for Loom is also valid in the weekend. Uh, I believe so. Uh, I think they just made one reservation on the system, which is, I mean, you cannot have it in multiple chunks. It's, uh, I can check it quickly. S control show reservation. Um, Okay, so also please give us feedback on the form. And uh, well, you know, thank you all for having a, resisted also during the second day and uh, hopefully we see you on some Monday. Okay. And then, and have a, a great weekend. Yeah.